In this video, we'll be covering electrolysis. So electrolysis is running a redox reaction in reverse. So in other words, um, you're taking a negative E cell uh, process, and so one that doesn't happen spontaneously. So, so therefore, uh, your delta G ends up being positive. Uh, so you get it to run in reverse by actually forcing it to with a current. So you're actually adding work in the form of electricity to get the reaction to go backwards. So the, the way that it's not really intended to go. So you're making it go. So basically you're coupling it with um, some negative delta G processes um, to counteract the positive delta G that the reaction has. So usually that means, you know, the burning of some some type of fossil fuel or or some way that we get generate electricity um, and so you're, you're using that work in the form of free energy um, to make it go in reverse so usually these are a cost intensive processes as well so for example um, to produce aluminum it takes a lot of current uh, to get aluminum because if you if you check out aluminum on our um, if you if you look at aluminum here, it's uh, where's aluminum's number forty nine, um, and so that's that's really low. So it really doesn't like to be reduced. So when you're producing aluminum, it's going to take a lot of current to get it to go to uh, solid aluminum, um, and so it's it costs a lot actually to do that. So. Um, in most metals we use in industry, they're found as ores, so they're found in their charge state and in their cation form, and they're not in pure metallic form, um, unless it's like a, some precious metal like silver or gold um, then, or platinum, then you could find those in their um, reduced state, so you'd find them in their elemental form. Um, but most metals are not found like that in nature, so they require some processing and some... Uh, energy put in to make the reactions go in reverse. Um, so let's take a look at a example problem for electrolysis. So, um, so the first thing that my first suggestion is to write out the half reaction first. Um, the point of doing this is to give you the mole ratio of electrons transferred to the amount of solid formed. And uh, you'll see what I mean when, when we look at a couple examples. Um, and the next bit of uh, tools or skills you need is to use dimensional analysis um, and some unit conversions. So the, the unit conversions that we're going to use is uh, the symbol for a current is uh, the symbol used for current is I, capital I, and the units are in amps. Um, an amp isn't really usable for us in these electrolysis problems. So it's based on uh, coulombs per second, actually. So one amp, so you'll need this when you do electrolysis problems, is one amp, one capital A, um, is equal to one coulomb per second. Um, and be prepared to flip this number. So a lot of problems, like, it, let, let's say, for example, you get a, a problem where you have 100 amps are applied to a solution. Uh, so let's say you have 100 amps applied to a solution. Um, this means you have 100 coulombs per second are applied. So be ready in problems where they're asking you how long will it take to form this much uh, like one gram of solid nickel. Um, if they're so they're they're asking you to solve for time so be prepared to flip this conversion factor okay so be prepared to write it like this as well so one in one second a hundred point zero coulombs are applied so it just depends on the problem and what you're trying to solve for um, so the symbol for current is I and the unit we use for current are amps um, and then like I'm like I was just explaining you could uh, convert those units to a coulomb per second. The other key conversion factor is you'll need a uh, Faraday's constant. So one Faraday is 96,485 coulombs per mole of electron. And also be prepared to flip this conversion factor as well. So you could also write this uh, one mole of electron 
per 96,485 coulombs. So it just depends on the problem, whether we need to flip these or not. So let's go ahead and look at an example problem. So this says, uh, I'll need to erase that. So this can be flipped and write uh, one second over 100.0 coulombs. Um, okay, so let's look at this problem. Restoration of an iron statue requires the reversing of the rusting process. Um, iron 3 needs to be reduced to uh, solid iron in this process. How long would it take to plate out 2 kilograms of iron by using a current of 100 amps? So we're asked to solve for... Uh, we're asked to solve for how long would it take. So we're trying to solve for time. So the only unit, the only unit with time is currents here. Um, and just like I was saying, how you're gonna have to flip it, flip this. You're gonna have to flip this one in, in this problem because we're gonna need time um, in the numerator when we do our dimensional analysis. So. Um, Let's start by taking this uh, kilograms here. Well, actually, let's start by writing out our half reaction. So our half reaction is going to be Fe3 plus needs to be fully reduced to make solid iron. So our mole ratio is it's going to require three moles of electrons to make one mole of solid iron. So we're going to use that somewhere in this problem, too. So it's kind of like a game when, when we start using uh, dimensional analysis. We just want to line up our units here. So we go 2.0 times 10 to the third grams of iron. So we, we need to change this to grams because we're going to use the molar mass to get it to moles. So one mole of iron is 55.95 grams of iron. So now we're in moles of iron. Uh, one The key thing here is we're trying to get this into moles because from a mole you could pretty much go everywhere. This is kind of this is our key right here. Okay, this this mole unit right here is going to be our key. Um, this is why we're using the molar masses so, so that we could get to our mole and coulomb. So this is our this is kind of like the 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 critical component here is we we want to get moles. This is how we're going to relate moles and coulomb, and then coulomb is how we're going to relate it to um, the current that's being applied. So uh, the next step here is to get to moles of electrons. So one mole of solid, so we have solid uh, iron. So we're going to go one mole of Fe. So we're going to use this one. This ratio is three moles of electrons. So our grams of iron cancel, our moles of uh, iron cancel. And now we're at moles of electron. Okay, so now we're going to use this one, um, but we want to write it like this because moles of electron is on the bottom. So we're going to write one mole of electrons is 96,485 coulombs. So that unit cancels. Um, and now we see we're at coulomb. So we can choose to write this. We could choose to write it like this. But then we'll have Coulomb in the numerator and then the numer numerator again, so it won't cancel. So we need to write it like this so that the, the Coulomb will cancel. So we're going to write 100 Coulombs here and then one second here. So we get Coulombs to cancel. So it ends up being just kind of like a long dimensional analysis problem, this electrolysis problem. Um, and so this gives us... Uh, Actually, I'm going to go ahead and this is going to, we're going to get a large number here because of because of this number. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, convert this to hours. So in one hour, there are 3,600 seconds. So I'm going to get the seconds to cancel so that I wind up my answer is in hours here. So my answer is 29, and I have two sig figs because of this number. So that's my original measurement. So I have 29 hours. So it's going to take 29 hours um, if you apply this much current. Okay, so realize uh, one of the, so the current is actually a rate. It's how much coulombs per second. So realize we can reduce the time if we increase the current. So this should make sense just 
you know, literally thinking about it. So if I apply more work in the form of the current, um, I'll get this done faster. Uh, mathematically, we could see that if we have a bigger number here, then I get a lower number here. So it reduces the time it takes if I have a, a stronger current applied. All right, so time for uh, you guys to try. Um, here's the, the example for you guys to try. So A and B, you're going to find are exactly like the one I just did. Um, the difference is going to be the moles of electrons transferred. Um, and in number two, um, and also the molar masses, of course, in number two, um, this problem is actually going backwards. So this and these, they give you the mass, and they ask you how long. In this problem, they tell you, what if I applied this much current for this much time? And then they're asking what mass. So you'll notice in, in this problem, you'll notice that all of the conversion factors are going to be flip-flopped. So, But just go ahead and line them up, and you, you'll get them as, as usual. Um, one little thing I'm noticing about that problem, uh, one little thing I'm noticing about this problem is here, um, 1 million amps will be 1.00 times 10 to the 6 amps. And again, an amp is a coulomb per second. Okay, so let's see what you guys come up with on that one.